Hello everybody. Thanks for joining me again. No guesses for knowing where I am. So moving on with the camera settings, this week I want to talk about ISO. Now when do I use ISO? Well the only times I use ISO is when there's poor light and the other camera settings I'm using for a particular subject. So for instance if I need a fast shutter speed to photograph birds in flight or uh, wild, any wildlife for that matter, then especially in the mornings, evenings or in woodland like this, you might find that you need to uh, increase the ISO to capture more light. So when I'm uh, just walking about with the uh, long telephoto lens on, on the off chance I might see some birds. Then I've got some auto settings and the shutter speeds are a thousandth of a second and the aperture is normally at quite an open setting for the camera, probably about 6.3 to 4.5. And then I use it on uh, auto ISO. But what that does in low light is uh, increase the ISO and in some cases creates more noise in the photograph. So what I thought I might do here is I've seen a, a wagtail going up and down the river and it's quite bright so I, I'm guessing I'm going to get quite a good ISO, quite a low number using my automatic settings. Right, let's see uh, what I can get. I can still hear that wagtail. I've come down lower so I can get a shot across the water. It's always good to try and get down on eye level with whatever your subject is. Well, as you can see, it was very bright indeed, and I'm not really happy with the photograph, but it does show you that at ISO 2000, with this amount of light, you really can't see any um, grain in the background of the photograph where you'd expect to see it with a high ISO. So for that, I'm quite pleased that it demonstrates what it looks like. So the other reason you might use a higher ISO number is if you're doing some astrophotography. Obviously not going to do that today out in the woods and um, I'm just climbing up through the woodland up to the moors and I'm going to keep the long lens on and the same shutter speed of a thousandth of a second with an auto ISO and then let's see what we get and if I get any decent photographs we'll discuss the ISO numbers. Of course the other thing I could do, especially with the settings I've got, is just reduce the shutter speed a little. So to get uh, the birds shot, it depends what they're doing. If they're perching and you just happen to get one sat on a perch then obviously reduce the shutter speed if you can. And get yourself a better ISO number and less noise. 
Well, there seems to be a little bit more bird activity near the top of this woodland, closer to the moor. I can see some small birds flying backwards and forwards. So what I'm going to do is just head on towards the uh, towards the light slowly, and then just see what I can find. Well, what I hadn't noticed while I was uh, taking photographs of these birds is I'd already set a maximum ISO of 3200. So I wasn't really going to get um, the maximum effect that I wanted. My camera will go up to uh, uh, 51,200 ISO. Anyway, this photograph of this black cap at 3200 ISO you can see as he was uh, quite well illuminated and perched uh, quite still it's quite a sharp photograph so I'm quite happy with this and uh, the next one that's uh, I've cropped in so that you can see some grain in the background still at the uh, crop that you'd normally view this it's still a nice photograph so quite pleased with this Now this is an example of a photograph that just didn't work. This blue tick going in and out of the hole where the nest is was in full shadow and at uh, ISO 3200 the sensor just wasn't gathering enough light and you can see especially when I zoom in that uh, it's quite grainy and it's blurred the photograph is just not very sharp which is a shame if I'd have got the settings right, I could have captured some great images as the bird flew in and out of the nest, just like this. Anyway, let's head out onto the moor, where I know there's some skylarks, and uh, see if we can photograph them. It's getting pretty warm, and uh, clear blue skies, so it's going to be warm out there on the moor, but at least I won't be being eaten alive by these midges. Right, let's, let's go and give it a go. So it's a little bit of a walk up from the forest there, up onto the moor, and as you can see it's very, very warm. Come to stand by this lone tree, get a little bit of shade. But uh, I've heard some yellow hammers down on the edge of the forest there, and just up ahead I can hear some skylarks. So let's go and see if I can photograph one of those. Well, as you can see, I've got a preset on number two memory there. And uh, if we look at that, if you can see the screen, it's set at uh, one thousandth of a second auto ISO. And let me just have a look. Currently it's at uh, F5.6. And all I'm doing is looking out across the moor and looking to see if I can see any 
skylarks or ground nesting birds. Let's give that a go for a bit. Well, being on the ground, these skylarks were quite difficult to get close to. So this was shot at 350 mil. And the auto ISO set itself for this photograph at 400. So apart from uh, maybe a little bit of focusing, this is uh, quite a sharp image. Same with this one. The ISO was at 500. I was able to get a little bit closer. And although the birds are a little bit in shadow because of the backlight, and it was a very bright day, this isn't too bad an image. Well, I don't think I've taken the greatest of images today, but never mind. The whole idea was to uh, show you some different uh, techniques and uh, what I do with shutter speed when I'm filming wildlife. And um, yeah, that was successful then. I'm nearly back at the car. Um, if you haven't worked it out, I'm at Coombstone Tor. And early in the morning, it's a lovely place. Very quiet. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Hope you liked the video. If you did, hit that subscribe button and give me a like. Bye for now. Cheerio.